episode of Gippsland Art Gallery's Art at Home and today we're going to be looking at the artwork by Kate Schoen and that's going to be this copper sculpture here in the cabinet next to me and we're going to be doing an observation drawing similar to the life drawing classes that are run here at the gallery by me and we're going to look at a couple of different drawing techniques today and hopefully you'll be able to replicate them at home. So I'm going to start with a warm-up sketch. This one's going to be about five minutes and I'm gonna keep the time on my phone here just for the warm-up and I'm going to be doing this one in a pit pastel, which is just a pastel that is in a pencil form. This is white because I'm working on a black background and so I want it to be able to stand out and I'm just gonna be focusing on getting the form of the figure into my work and I'm going to be focusing on the outside of the shape first and then working on small details if I get enough time. And I'm just making small adjustments as I go, going over the top of my drawing and adjusting where I position things because as I've drawn it, this part of my drawing needs to come up a little bit more and re-angle. And I'm just drawing over the top of it so that I don't reposition it incorrectly. And then I'll just fix it up by going over the top like that to imply shading. I'm working with white on black I'm actually working in an inverted method where I'm looking at where all the shadows are in my drawing and using the white to highlight that instead of the opposite way around where you would usually use white to highlight instead of imply shadow. And I'm just trying to get down basic shapes and understand where things are in my drawing before I go on to a longer drawing similar to how we do in the life drawing class. So it's practicing ways of seeing and training your eye to see where things are correctly and being able to mimic that in a drawing. And I'm just using my finger to knock back some of the lines that I've done to create shading and imply that there are shadows underneath parts of these shapes within my drawing, which will give the illusion that it is three dimensional and not just 2D. And then once you've done that, you can go back over and use more detail with your pastel or your pencil, whatever you're using at home. Um, to give it more detail and more dimension within your picture.
And I've got two minutes left, still keeping an eye on the time. Just trying to knock you in. As many of the details as I can. Always referring back to your image or your object that you're drawing. Of course this will be a lot easier if you're drawing an object from life that's in front of you because that will help you practice seeing shadows and correct lighting whereas drawing from a picture is quite challenging or it might not be challenging enough because your lighting will never change and you can always come back to that six hours later and the lighting will still be the same and you don't have to work within time constraints but I'm working within time constraints in this video because we're mimicking the life during class and I've got about 30 seconds left And I think I'm going to stop that one there. So I'm going to start by sketching the outline of my shape and then correcting that as I go and also making sure that I've got the timer on. Perfect. And again I'm just going to be drawing directly over the top of my image because I prefer that drawing style. And I'm using green pastel on my black paper to make it stand out and also because it's a bright colour and then when I want to do my shadows or darker lines I'm going to use a darker green pastel that is still quite neon in colour just so it stands out against my black background. So you should just be sketching what you can see in your reference image or in the artwork or object that you are drawing, if you're drawing a person, you should only be drawing them from the one spot or the one position. That's why I'm not going to be moving my reference image while I'm drawing it. And to help me measure and correct my positioning on my drawing where I have put in these little petal shapes or organic shapes that are protruding off of the object, I'm going to either use my pastel to measure against my object and see whether it's proportionate to my page and then make my adjustments from there. or you can just eyeball it and make corrections afterwards.
and I'm just going to work my way across the image, not jumping from section to section, because otherwise I will lose my position. And end up with a drawing that doesn't look very correct. I'm just doing this in really scribbly rough lines because it's just practicing placing objects in the right position, practicing ways of seeing and how to correct your drawing. Because I've made a mistake with my drawing in the placement, I'm just going to smudge this in to correct it and that will also help me create some shading in part of my image which I will work more on later. But this will also help me to correct where I've positioned something. So because I didn't get to finish, I didn't get to shade in or add any shadows or dimension to my artwork, I was mainly just working on correcting where I had positioned things because it's quite a complex sculpture. So I'm just going in and shading in some of my darker shadows with my darker impasto just because I like how the greens play off of each other and it makes it a little bit more interesting and it doesn't just look like a green sort of blob. But I'm just going to work on doing that for a couple of minutes and it will make the artwork stand out a little bit more and it makes it a little bit more three-dimensional and a little bit more finished. So I'm just going to work with what I've got on the page over the top of it and just cross out and use simple lines to imply that there's shadows or shading in part of it. And I just sort of like that scribbly sort of mess that you get with this sculpture because it's quite organic as a form and as a shape. And it's quite interesting to draw. And I'll just add in the shadow that's beneath it by turning my pastel sideways and adding a couple of thinner lines through there and then the black pastel in the top just because I like how they play with each other. And that's it. I'm going to start my timer. You can do this at home if you have a phone or a stopwatch and use it to keep track of the time that you're drawing for. This will help you to improve in getting quicker and training your eye to see things quicker and make adjustments accordingly. So I'm just going to start by laying in the figure again, really quick, really 
straight geometric lines, working with my charcoal. And I can do things like lay in shadows quite quickly by turning my charcoal sideways. And shading in where I think my shadow might lay. Mine's a little bit longer than what I've got in my reference image, but I can always knock that back. Because it's a warm up, I'm not really too fussed. And our sculpture is quite rounded on this side because it's supposed to be a pod, it's an organic shape. And so I'm going to imply that it's round by using shading before going over the top with my smaller charcoal to imply detail. And I'm gonna shade the top of the surface to give it that sort of flatter tone and then go back in and go back over my dark tones to imply shadows. And again, checking my image to make sure I'm drawing things in the correct spot. I'm going back over them when I think it's correct. Working with charcoal is easier for this because you can take lines out quite easily with your finger once you're happy with them. So if I'm happy where I've put these petals and the organic shapes, I'll just take out the lines behind them. And then I can pick out smaller details with my small charcoal, my thinner charcoal. And being able to smudge things back is also going to help you when you're implying shadows in your drawing. So now that I'm happy with most of my placement, I'm just going to knock in some larger shadows by cross-hatching behind them or close to them and really laying in where my darker shadows are in the picture in my reference image just to imply that the object is 3D. Ooh. And I'm trying to work quite quickly again because we are still using the timer. If I don't work quick enough, I'm going to run out of time and not be able to finish my picture again. So I'm gonna to switch to my smaller charcoal and pick out some of my details in there.
So I'm going to start our final drawing using my green pastel and then I'm going to work over the top with some green ink. This is going to be to imply shadows in the work but also because pastel is easier to start our sketch with. And that way if I make a mistake I can take it back. Just making adjustments as I go, correcting where I put things, and then again shading the area before I go over the top with the ink. And so I'm just smudging this back to give the paper a little bit more texture and myself a little bit more to work with. Gradually making a darker tone. I'm just trying to complete most of the top petals before I move down to the bottom. And I'm just trying to move a little bit quicker so that I don't run out of time. Basic shapes. 
before I add in the ink. because I'm mostly happy with where I've placed things now. I can go in and start adding in some shading to give some of these some definition. As you can see, I'm working with just solid lines to highlight where my shadows are. So that it makes it stand out a little bit more. Now that I've done that, I can start working with ink over the top of it. I'm just mixing up some ink in some water to dilute it to do an ink wash over the top and then I'm going to use a fan brush to just do a simple wash over the top of my drawing. And I'm just saturating the brush before I do the wash and it's just going to be simple backwards and forwards till I've covered the page. I'm just going to be adding, adding some final touches to the artwork just to see if I can give it any more dimension or anything else over the top of my dried artwork after the wash. I'm going to be using some blue colours to create more contrast in the work and to give it a little bit more depth and to bring back some of the features that I washed over and 
took out of the work in that process because I blurred them a little bit. Um, and I'm going to be using blue just because we're going with a bit of a sea ocean theme at the moment. So I'm just going to go over with my darker blue and pick out some of the darker details. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Gippsland Gallery's Art at Home and today we've been looking at Kate Schoen's artwork Large Sea Pod. There's high resolution images of this available on the gallery's website and at the link provided and you can view any of the other artworks in the gallery's collection on the website if you're unable to make it to the gallery. There's some really lovely images up there if you want to draw any of the artworks that are in the collection and if you do create your own artwork from this task or any of the other artworks from the gallery, you can use our hashtag Gibbs Art at Home and thank you so much for joining us for this episode and we'll see you next time.